Armored Core Law Can you beat Armored Core for answer as White Glint, the famous pilot of Armored Core for answer, and quite the legend with what they did? With skills that scare corporations and able to be the only links of an organization to do this, White Glint and its unknown pilot certainly have made their mark in the history of Armored Core. But can this legend of this generation complete the game that made them into this solo ace? Well, let's find out. As always, I'll be taking White Glint through the game on the default regulation. That's right, no giving Line Arc Savior a boost with Regulation 1.4, which made missiles very effective. But first, a quick look at White Glint, made by Abe Marsh. This next is made up of White Glint parts for its main frame of the craft, making it rather unique. However, what is perhaps more interesting is the inside parts of White Glint, these being the Omir Judith FCFs, the O3 Alia Generator, an Omir Judith Main Booster, the Ikaiza Back Booster, and more Omir parts, including a Hollow Furnace Side Booster and Palace Assault Armor. It's interesting as we know Omir was very much the puppet master of the League, and if any of these parts should break or be needed, that would mean Lynark would be doing business with the foes they are fighting against. Granted, with the criminal elements of Lynark being a key point, it's possible White Glint and his operator dealt with black market dealings or smuggling rings within these groups. But then again, when has the League or corporations ever had a problem selling equipment to foes? Going back to White Glint, it's a middleweight next which excels in the air, a white winged angel is perhaps a good way to describe this craft as it can dance through the air thanks to its boosters and low energy usage, making White Glint rain down judgement from above with its weapons. However, while White Glint is painted as this next of super power and unbeatable in most circumstances, White Glint does suffer from having a low energy defence, so if you wish to clip this angel's wings, get the lasers out. Speaking of lasers, thanks to not using any energy weapons, White Glint's energy is saved for dodging, while attacking is done by the O51 Anar rifle, which is your hard hitting gun, while the O63 Anar is the assault rifle that will be tearing down a foe's primal armor. Together, they can take down any necks that can't get out of White Glint's firing range. That said, even though I'll be doing this run in the default regulation, you'll see the two Saline O5 spread missiles on White Glint's back are powerhouses even here. You'll see as I play that these missiles deal with most necks on this run, and I even start to use them over the rifles. So this is a quick look over Linearch's next, so let's see how it does in the game Armored Core for Answer. As always, I'll play through all the missions of the game, so we'll start with the first one, Attack on Linearch. The first mission in the game, and really one no necks with weapons should fail. White Glint, in this case, is able to clean up with some rifle shots for the MTs and missiles to deal with the normals. Attack Naval Port Mimir, again, nothing difficult here for our white next of legends. Its rifles can make short work of all the boats and MTs, while White Glint's missiles are good for taking out Stigro and the rather tough normals that make their home here. Ambush Spear Invasion Force is another easy mission for White Glint as our White Angel uses its rifle to take down a good chunk of the invaders while using the Vanguard Overboost before we swing around and start clearing up. However, I found as I played that the missiles are a better choice here, allowing White Glint to keep its distance and they chase the large jets taking them out quicker than rifle shots. Attack on Richland is very much the same story, only I let my focus fall on the little normals at the front instead of going straight for the land crab kill. In return, I got hit a couple of times, which did lower the score to a B rank. But the real takeaway from here is just to focus on the land crab. Don't go into relax mode like I did. Defeat Armsport Gigabase. Again, nothing really much to say here. White Glint zooms in and sinks this giant ting tank into the ocean. The only thing I would say is missiles again. Even here in the default regulation, the spread missiles make short work of most of these big foes, so let them have it. Support the Red Barrette Assault. All I have to say here is rifles take out the MTs and missile trucks, and White Glint's missiles take out the normals and two large old types at the end. Again, White Glint can fly away from this mission with an easy S rank. Defeat Wonderful Body. This is a joke, right? White Glint is just so much faster it can run circles around him, and the missiles of White Glint make short work of this MT pilot. 
S rank. Attack B7. Whiteland's missiles were a bit useless here to be honest, as such it was rifles all the way. Even if some of the normals here proved to be bullet sponges, and I did get hit by one of them with a pile driver. So I walked away with a C rank here. Ah, the horror! But really this was more my piloting skill than White Glint here. Clear former Chinese Shanghai. Again, not really tough, as the rifle shots to the buildings where the special NTs are sat make them go tumbling into the ocean. And the, for the boats in Giga Arms Fort, they do the same with missiles. Take back Cradle 21. The front was no match here, white glit missiles all the way, and down they go with very little effort on my part. Defeat Armsfort Capricorn. It took me two tries to take out its tracks with the rifles, but after that white glint took the skies to fight head on with the drones with its rifles. Granted the power of this swarm was on show here with white glint taking some damage, but S rank still. Defeat Spirit of Mother Will is again a cakewalk for white glint, this age old wreck is no match for its speed and the rifles taking out the missiles, while Whiteglint's own missiles deal with the cannons. It seems this time Whiteglint would not be struggling for ammo unlike it did the first time these two giants met. Rescue GA Transport I admit this was perhaps the worst I did with Whiteglint, I was hit so many times by the lasers this interior Union Grand Crab dished out, and really I should have been using missiles but I seem so focused on using rifles for some reason. Again, use missiles with these big targets, keep the rifles for smaller foes. However, the game must have been feeling generous as it ranks this mission a B rank. Attack on PN51. Nothing really happened here. Mostly it was just rifle only run as Wyglin took out the Barrett squad and felled the resource plants. S rank with little trouble. Defeat Arms Fort Stigro. Again, remember when I said use missiles? I should have listened to my own advice, as I fire on Stigger with rifles, only then to have a brainwave after it nearly drowns Whiteland a little too early in its lore. I then use missiles and bam, no more Stigro. And yes, an S rank here too, even if I did manage to nearly drown White Glint. The next two missions did not really have much to add, as White Glint just zooms in and kills. So that's it for Eliminate Protheon and Escape Naval Port Mimir. Defeat Unknown Next plus No Count was really all missiles, and they did the jump with ease. And it's the same story for Defeat Unknown Next, it's just missiles away. I feel White Glint and Vero Nork should have a missile party one day. Defeat the Great Wall was basically a race. White Glint zooms in, makes his way through, taking out foes when it has to, and then keep firing at the reactor, reverse out of there, and the Great Wall falls. Defend Megalus. Well, this being the power plant for Lionark and all air foes, Whiteglint was in its element here, with rifles to take down the smaller flying foes, while its missiles dealt with the normals and Eclipse when it showed up. Megalus was undamaged, and Whiteglint once again proved to be Lionark's saviour. Defeat Whiteglint and defend Lionark. I think you can guess at this point, but it was all missiles. Ostava, Cube, and even Whiteglint themselves fell to this Whiteglint spread missiles. And really, Q proved to be more trouble here than White Glint. With the defending line arc mission, we got a C rank due to damages, so never underestimate the speedy next. Defeat Red Rum and Starker. Again, while it's nice to see my favourite female Lynx again in action, she did make this a little tough with her speed and using buildings as cover from the missiles. So an A rank here. Defeat Unidentified Armsfort. It was missile time again. Just use missiles and everything and boom, down goes this nightmare of a craft. S rank here to make up for the A last time. Defeat the 8th fleet is more about speed than anything else. Use the rifles here to take out more than Stigro. It's a race that White Glint can win. That said, we only managed a B rank. But with more tries, I'm sure an S rank is doable. Destroy B7. It's again more run and gun here. It takes too long to take out the normals here, so we raced through, shot the Kojima NG plants, and then made an escape using the missiles to break down the tougher doors. But damage here did lower us to an A rank. Both defend Arteria Carpels and attack on Arteria Carpels, both see Noblesse and Julius fall to the mighty missiles of White Glint. A rank here for both these missions, however, as both next manage to get some nice hits in before I take them out. Defend Cradle 3 is again a story of missiles. You may have guessed it by now, but I started to fall back heavily on the missiles of White Glint. 
I might as well call this Veronark playthrough 2.1 with this missile usage. Defeat Orca Armsfort. Again, missiles just hover over their heat fans and fire off the missiles and they won't last long. Attack satellite cannons, again, close one here mind you, with, with the laser defences of the cannons hitting me a few times, but again, to get this one done, it's more missiles. I'm going to save some time here, as with the next few missions, this including defeat the main Orca forces, defend Arteria Cranium, defend satellite cannons and attack on Arteria Cranium, it was all next battles, which ends shortly with the use of missiles. White Lint, as I have already said, is becoming Vero Nork 2 here. But while this run was good and I admit rather easy, there was two bumps. Defeat Armsfort Antra, and of course, the occupation of Arteria Carpels. Granted for the Antra I got close, but after three times I called it, and the same for the 4 vs 1 next mission. White Glint is a legend, but against 4 nexts, with 2 which pack a punch with energy weapons, it's a tough challenge, but this is perhaps where my skill level is capped as a pilot. All in all, White Glint can complete two of the storylines in Army Corps for answer, but as always, this is with myself as its pilot. With a more skilled pilot, it's very possible White Glint could uphold its legendary status and show the world this saviour can also be a devil.